What's going on, crypto world? It's Dr. G from Altcoin Buzz. So in this video, we're going to explore errors or biases in our thinking, uh, cognitive biases, if you will, and how they impact our crypto investing, crypto trading. Um, not only are we going to learn how to identify what I consider to be some of the most common um, cognitive biases or thinking errors, but we're going to learn how to combat these so we are as effective as possible with our, with any of our crypto-related um, behaviors. So without further ado, let's get started. So as a psychologist, uh, the brain is kind of where it starts for me. Um, in my clinical work, in my research, and in my hobby of cryptocurrency, I really have a brain-centric uh, point of view, which uh, I guess you could say is my bias, which is... Uh, you know, a pretty ironic thing. So yeah, brain bias for me. Um, but I think the brain's important since we're talking about thoughts and cognitive distortion. So let's talk about the brain for a minute. So the brain, this uh, incredibly complex piece of biological circuitry um, that we all carry around, um, the most advanced um, neuro, neurobiological or <laughs> biologic neural technology out there. You know, this is the process of evolution. Um, we have, this is what separates us from all other animals that we have the best neural technology. Um, and so it's circuit based. It's, it's kind of like a computer, um, a biologic computer. So it's complex, it's adaptive and it's machine like. These are all key features of the brain and why it's so resilient. So when we look at it, and why it's resilient and effective, I should say. So when we look at it, it's kind of compartmentalized. You know, you have your occipital lobe back here, you have your vision center, you have your cerebellum right here, which um, has houses your coordination, some other things, and then you have your motor strips up here, tactile sensation, they're connected to your um, coordination center as well, as well as your occipital lobe, these are all interconnected. Then you have your frontal lobe here, where you have more of your, some of your more advanced um, cognitive abilities that we call like executive functions, your ability to, to shift between topics, so multitask, um, your sustained attention, um, being able to inhibit behavior, a lot of um, advanced cognitive abilities live up there. And then sensory things as well, like smelling, hearing, uh, he smelling, hearing, speech, you know, taste, all that good stuff. So you can see this is a, kind of the electrical circuitry. There's also, um, neurotransmitters, which are little chemical packets that transmit information across your brain. And you can see there's DTI imaging here, which actually shows you um, the axons. So you can see where the, um, the axons go, so where they connect in kind of these hubs, um, processing centers, distribution centers. Um, and it creates beautiful um, artwork. Um, so this beautiful evolutionarily designed piece of machinery that we all have that controls all of our behaviors and our physiological processes directly and indirectly. Well, guess what? It's made by evolution, so it's imperfect. There's errors. It's not a perfect machine. We do not perceive the world in 100% accuracy. None of us do. Um, and at certain times, it becomes so biased that it can impact our effectiveness to interact with that environment. So we call these cognitive distortions, errors, or biases. And what the problem with this is, is our brain is a problem-solving computer. And we want to be able to take in information and process it in the most accurate way so that we can respond the most effectively to whatever that is. In terms of what we're talking about today, it's responding to the crypto environment. We, we need to get the information in the best way so that we can interact the best way. So how do we do that? Well, we identify these errors and then we challenge the biases based on data, observable data. So this is based on what we call cognitive behavioral theory or that we're in charge of our thoughts and behavior. So it starts with identifying and then challenging. All right. So error one, the first cognitive error. So recency bias. So what's recency bias? Well, it's, the problem is that, is that we give disproportional cognitive attention to things that are the most recent. So cryptocurrency, we're in the business of predicting the future, where that's going to go. Well, we need to understand the past to know where that's going to go. And we, un we put heavier weight to the, to the more recent past. So that thing that happened two days ago is going to influence our decision making far more than that thing that happened four weeks ago. 
when maybe that thing that happened four weeks ago matters far more to the future prediction of our crypto. So we need to be able to um, accurately allocate our cognitive uh, attention to time period. And if we don't, it's biased. So you can see right here, this guy's uh, this guy right here looks like he's coming in for an interview or I don't know which way. But he goes, your evaluation is based on the next 30 seconds. Go. So obviously that, that's too recent to make a good decision, hiring or crypto related. So how do we fix this, this recency bias? Well, we want to be a student of history and scale. So history, as we know, repeats itself and scale is uber important in a lot of different um, avenues. Basically, the um, a bird's eye view or a mouse eye view or somewhere in between. What, what depth are you going to look at it? If you're interested in scale, uh, this is a good book I read over the summer. Um, this Jeffrey West has a very interesting theory about how um, there's these basic mechanisms that influence scale in these repeating patterns in biology, in city planning, um, in corporation growth, all in growth, that there's these um, scaling patterns seen in growth across um, ideas, things, businesses, what have you. Interesting. Good read. So here's an example right here. So how, so look at, so look at this right here. So uh, this is illustrates the bias. So we see right here, when we look at the, uh, the one month, pretty solid uptrend. I think nobody would really disagree that that's, that's going up right there. Slow, but steady. Then we look at two, we change the scale, the interval and the history. So again, scale and history, We're looking back in time and a different viewpoint, three months different. It's going down mostly. Yeah, there's a little upturn right here. This is that one month that we saw over here. But the majority, 70% or 65% of this is down. And then when we look at one year, what do we see again? Now we go back to what we saw the first time when we looked at the, uh, the month uh, scale. So now when we're looking at it at a year interval, look at that. Now that's a pretty solid uptrend right there. You have this obviously this parabolic growth right here in this pullback, but we can draw a line right through that. And we got growth. So the way to balance, to counteract that recency bias is challenge, um, look for data based on changing scale and history. All right. So that's recency bias. So now we're on the second cognitive error of cryptocurrency, loss aversion. So what's loss aversion? Well, Loss aversion is putting higher cognitive focus on losses rather than gains. So you look at this dude right here, he's freaking out. But in fact, he's still up. He's up a lot still. I mean, you know, if he went from here, you know, he's up one right now. So he's freaking out when in fact, maybe he shouldn't be freaking out. He should be maybe <laughs> taking profits here, uh, maybe reinvesting it or doing something. But, you know, he doesn't need to freak out like that because he's biased. He's Viewpoint of this is biased, um, and that's because we put higher weight on the losses. So research suggests that losses are two times as influential at, in our decisions as um, gains. So a theory behind this is that you know our brains are designed by evolution, and that things that could kill us before, like years ago, were way more important for our brain to focus on more than like necessarily where the good things were. So our brains were designed to really focus on that negative thing um, as a way of survival. So we got good at it. Another example that I use in my clinical work is going, getting an evaluation by your supervisor. Your supervisor might tell you five things that you did well, and if they tell you one criticism, if you're like me, you're likely gonna hold that criticism far tighter than those four or five other good things. And it's going to be biased. You're going to put more weight in that criticism. And that's human nature. And that's okay. We just need to combat that so we're most effective in crypto trading than in life. So the solution is account for risk and plan for it. So that means stop losses. That might mean knowing history like right here. So right here, what do we got here? So we got Bitcoin's crashes. So we just had one recently up here. But as you can see, when you pull back and you look, look. This is risk that we should have seen coming. 93%, 70%, 86%. Keep in mind, this is a logarithmic um, axis right here. 
but you can still see these large drops. So this should be expect expected. We should have accounted for this. So thinking back, that's the way that we can challenge that bias, that loss aversion bias. Expect it and plan for it. So what's the next one? Confirmation bias, aka echo chamber. So con so let's go back. So confirmation bias, echo chamber. Uh, in our pol pol in the U.S. Uh, last um, political um, election, there's a lot of um, talk of people being in echo chambers in their own political affiliations. That was listening to people that think like you because you wanna you wanna hear that you're right. So you surround yourself with that. So the problem is, is human nature is we seek to support our beliefs and sometimes we'll exclude other beliefs in the fact of saving and preserving our own beliefs, even if they're wrong or even if they're biased. So this guy says, the scientist goes over here, did you read my paper on confirmation bias? And then this scientist goes, yes, but I only, but it, but it only proved what I already know. A well, little, little nerd joke right there. So the fix Look for those opposing viewpoints. So, you know, these people are looking at this same thing right here. They both have different options or both different, both in different um, statements about what is a six and a nine. But you know what? They're both right. Um, we would call that uh, dialectical. So they both can be right at the same time. Or this dress. This was a meme that went around, I don't know, a couple of years ago. A lot of people can see it in um, different colors. I think it was like golden uh, blue and uh, gold or black and blue and gold and white. I see it gold and white, but I, other people see it other ways. And you know, what? neither of us are necessarily wrong with this. So looking for different viewpoints so you can see the whole picture. Because in fact, we're all right. This is an optical illusion based on our um, kind of a trick that our nervous system um, has played on it by this picture. All right. So again, how to combat that confirmation bias is get information from different sources. So these two guys right here, I just put them here because they're good examples. Um, this guy is the permeable, uh, parabolic Trav. And Peter Brandt's more ba uh, balanced, but uh, probably towards the more bearish side for sure. Uh, so sometimes I look at them for kind of conflicting um, points of view so I get both sides. Kind of like if you watch Fox News and CNN, you kind of see both sides of uh, or MSNBC and CNN. All right, Fox News, um, different viewpoints so that you can have the most um, complete picture as a way to combat that um, confirmation bias. But in fact, you would want far more um, options than just two. This is just an example. All right. So the fourth bias is hindsight bias. So what's hindsight bias? Well, it's, the problem is, is that we see events that have that have already occurred as more predictable than they actually were. So I don't know about you guys, but this happens to me all the time. I'll see I'll see um, something going up, and I'm like, wow, how did I not see that coming up? Going up, that was a double bottom with strong volume. I knew that was going up, and you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So right here, a little optometry joke right here. He goes, okay, uh, let's check your hindsight. Right, this is gonna nail it. Like we always do, because it's because we're biased that way. So the fix for that is find a consistent model of analysis, but stay flexible. So get good at one form of analysis, but be able to be adaptive to your situation. So here's an example. So this is uh, Bitcoin and uh, um, Bitcoin Cash. Um, Bitcoin Cash sometimes has different um, lettering. Um, but here is Bitcoin Cash. So here you can see this guy is looking at Crypto Banger. He had uh, this is Bitcoin, and you can see that pattern right there. And these similar boxes are corresponding fractals, basically pattern repeating patterns that he thinks Bitcoin Cash is going to have. So he saw it in Bitcoin, and then he saw that this pattern was the same as this pattern, and then started that pattern. So he then he predicts that these things are going to happen. So what we would say is that that is an example of the hindsight bias, he is potentially putting way too much weight in this hindsight and what happened in the past. And he's trying to predict what's going on out here. What's this like a year out? This is a long ways out. So I would say, yo, you can go with that, but stay flexible. And when all of a sudden you, you get here and it's not moving the same way it moved here, now be flexible and adapt. 
Don't be stuck. Combat the bias. Be more effective. And the last one we're going to talk about is the blind spot bias. So what's the blind spot bias? Well, this is where it all starts for me. It's the problem is that we are aware of the biases of others, but not aware of our own. So we're, it's easy to see when we see somebody um, talking about Tron all day and we're like, dude, you are so biased to that. But then we think, you know, we're, we're holding on to this power ledger um, to the end of time. So, or this guy is only goes by TA and you only go by um, news or you're chasing forks or what have you. Um, so, yeah. So your blind spots and your bias in your a blind spot is a form of bias. You're not able to self-evaluate. So that's the problem. Self-evaluation. So the fix, self-evaluate. Look yourself in the mirror. Um, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What can you build on? I always take the approach in my clinical work and in my professional life to try to build upon my strengths and to focus on my strengths while building up my weaknesses um, kind of secondary. Um, so say strength oriented. So self-evaluation. So for me in crypto, um, what I think some of my strengths are, I, I have an understanding of behavior and cognition. Obviously, it's off of my background as being a psychologist, um, gathering data. Um, I, I publish papers and research for a living. Um, so I gather data from a lot of sources. Um, I take pride in that. Something I think I learned skill. Um, you know, I have skills in uh, statistics, experimental analysis, finding visual patterns, and ability to learn. So those are my strengths, but I definitely have weaknesses too. So I'm not a trader. So, TAs, so TA is very interesting. I think it's really important. But for me, I am kidding myself and I'm being biased if I think I'm not evaluating myself correctly if I say that I am a... Uh, I can do TA myself. So what do I do? I follow the people that I think know TA and I try to learn from them. And so maybe I can start putting that, um, I can be more autonomous with that in the future, but I'm not there yet. I'm also not a programmer and I'll, I'll never be a programmer. So I can read the white papers and get a basic understanding of it, but then I like to follow um, some of the technical people and the developers and the more um, technical podcasts or videos to see, you know, what are the guys that know the code? What do, what do they think about it? Because I need to know that, and that's my weakness. I don't know it. And on a personal level, you know, I, I'll take risks. Um, cryptocurrency is a hobby for me. I don't do this for – it's not my living. So, you know, I play a little um, I play a little loose at times. I take risks on um, some high potential, high-risk coins. Um, I also have my long-term bags as well. But I know I, I have propens uh, propen propensity to take risks at times. Um, so I have to keep that in mind. I have to know that I'm biased towards taking risks at times with my cryptocurrency. All right, guys. So that was uh, cognitive biases and cryptocurrency. I hope everybody liked it. Um, if you liked it, you want to hit the like button. That lets me know that I'm doing um, some good work that you guys like. And be putting out some similar videos like this. Um, Put in the comment sections other videos that you'd like for me to um, do from a um, psychologic point of view on cryptocurrency. Um, follow um, us on Twitter, Altcoin Buzz on Twitter. We have an Instagram, a Snapchat. Um, put alerts on for the uh, for new the video for when the videos come out. Um, yeah, and just leave your comments. I'll be interested in what you guys think. All right, have a good one, guys.